It has been a weird year for the Lakers. Last time I talked about them on this channel, I didn't have a whole lot of good things to say. Now they are 42 and 33, which is much better than what they were 72 games until last season, in which they made the conference finals. Can they make another run like that though? Honestly, I don't think so. As much fun as last year's playoffs were until the conference finals, I've thought all season that last year was fool's gold because they beat two teams that were descending to get to the conference finals. Now, their first round matchup, assuming they make it out of the play-in tournament, will be against the defending champions who they haven't beaten in over a year, or two teams on the rise in the Thunder and Timberwolves. Also, last year the Lakers benefited from the Thunder and Mavericks descending in the standings at the end of the season, but now, the Clippers are the only team descending in the West and I don't see them falling far enough to really benefit the Lakers. The Lakers have been so much better since the last time I talked about them on this channel. However, the problem is the Nuggets are still the Nuggets and the other two teams the Lakers could face in the first round if they make it out of the play-in tournament are the Timberwolves and Thunder who have made significantly bigger improvements from last year than the Lakers did. I also don't see the Lakers avoiding the play-in tournament because of how hot the six seeded Mavericks have been as of late. This is the deepest the Western Conference has been in a long time. Definitely the deepest Western Conference since LeBron became a Laker in the summer of 2018. The Lakers also faced two teams in the playoffs last year that were falling apart, the Grizzlies and Warriors, before getting swept by the Nuggets in the conference finals. The Grizzlies were 3-4 and four in their last seven regular season games and got overconfident against the Lakers. Maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess, what, what were you thinking? I don't care. He's old. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, I was waiting for that. I was expecting him to do that game four, game five. He wanted to say something when I got my fourth foul. Um, he should have been saying that earlier on. Um, but, you know, I poke bears. Um, I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. The Warriors have been consistently inconsistent ever since we all saw Draymond Green sucker punch Jordan Poole in practice before last season started. If the Lakers are the 8th seed, they'll face the Nuggets who have the best player in the world and the Lakers haven't beaten them since December of last season. Not only is Nikola Jokic unguardable, but Jamal Murray is also the one who averaged 32 points per game in last year's conference finals and he stepped up his play in the second half of this season from the first half. Assuming the Nuggets keep the top seed, the Lakers really need the seventh seed to have any hope for getting out of the first round. Even if the Lakers manage to avoid the Nuggets, the Timberwolves and Thunder are still teams that wouldn't get my hopes up against. Last year, the Lakers beat the Timberwolves in the play-in tournament to secure the seventh seed. The Timberwolves were without Jaden McDaniels, which I think was a bigger loss for them than we realized at the time. He may not have been the difference between beating the Nuggets and losing to them in the first round, but he's a big reason why the Timberwolves were 10th in defensive rating last year and first this year. It's guys like McDaniels that make it a lot harder to exploit Rudy Gobert's slow feet by having him extend out to the perimeter. Teams did this very effectively in the playoffs when Gobert played for the Jazz. Gobert is arguably the best rim protector the modern NBA has seen and probably will win his fourth defensive player of the year award this year. He got exploited in the playoffs when he played for the Jazz when opposing teams teams made him extend out to the perimeter to take advantage of his slow feet. However, the Timberwolves have much better point of attack defenders than the Jazz did when Gobert was with them, so it'll be harder to get Gobert to extend out to the perimeter. Anthony Edwards is also a better player than he was last year. He's also been able to up his scoring averages in the playoffs, and now he's playing on a much better team than he's ever played for before. It's his presence and also sixth man of the year candidate Nas Reed stepping up his play in the last month month that have allowed the Timberwolves to not suffer since Carl Anthony Towns went down with an injury. This is a team the Lakers are 1-2 and two against and their April 7th matchup is a huge test. The Lakers are 3-1 and one against the Oklahoma City Thunder so this is easily their most favorable matchup out of the top three teams in the West that the Lakers may face in the first round assuming they make it out of the play-in tournament. The Thunder are also the youngest team in the NBA. Even while considering those things, it's still not a sure thing that the Lakers can 
and win a playoff series against this team. My fear is that this will be yet another series where the other team has the best player in Shea Gilgis Alexander. SGA may only be 25, but he has the poise of a seasoned vet. OKC has a very deep team too, with multiple players who can score from all over and they all know how to play within their role with SGA leading the way. The Thunder have also been a far better defensive team than the Lakers. Even with Jared Vanderbilt healthy, the Thunder just have so much more depth on defense with guys like Jalen Williams, Lou Dort, Chet Holmgren, and Kaysen Wallace. If the Lakers end up playing OKC in the first round and are able to pull off the upset, of course I'll be happy, but my honest expectation is that they'll lose to the Timberwolves or Nuggets in the next round. A lot of things have gotten a lot better since I last made a full-length video about the Lakers. Cam Reddish and Torian Prince are not starting anymore. D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and Rui Hachimura really struggled early on but have played a lot better as of late. I'm still concerned about D'Lo come playoff time though. He was a huge reason why the Lakers got swept by the Nuggets. Perhaps being worried about being on the move again is what was hurting his confidence since the playoffs. I just hope for the time being the Lakers don't let him worry about him being traded again so he can stay confident. Another concern I have is Jared Vanderbilt's health. The report Reports I've read say it's a matter of when, not a matter of if for his return. He hasn't played since February 1st and has missed most of the season due to injuries. At the All-Star break, the Lakers weren't so bad defensively, but since the All-Star break, their defensive rating is just 25th. They even gave up 124 points to the worst offense in the league, the Memphis Grizzlies, without John Morant. I can expect Vando to at least play hard every game. However, how effective he really can be is questionable. Even even as great as he is defensively when he's fully healthy, his limitations on offense hurt the Lakers in last year's conference finals. There's also Gabe Vincent who's missed most of the season due to injury. He's expected to come back come playoff time, but he wasn't even good for the Lakers when he was healthy. Now for the stars, as impressive as LeBron has been at 39, I just don't think you can rely on him as heavily as the Lakers do to win a championship. As much as I hate load management, a guy his age shouldn't be able to move Move like he does even while load managing but if he can't give a hundred percent on both ends of the floor that is concerning he's scoring 25 points per game nice but he's also taken too many plays off on defense this year as far as his offense goes let's please remember this just because you get assists doesn't mean you make your teammates better lebron's a great passer but his heliocentric style allows defenses to load up on him and it gives him more opportunities to get assists but this style does not actually make everyone around him better. Both D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves have been significantly better statistically without LeBron because LeBron dominating the ball doesn't give them nearly as much freedom to play their games. The Lakers have also won 60% of their games without LeBron including two big wins against the Bucks. but of course the Lakers will still rely on LeBron heavily. As for Anthony Davis, clearly the team's best player for how he affects the game on both ends when he's at his best. I want him demanding the ball late in the game when the Lakers go away from him. It's something that we as Laker fans have not liked Darvin Ham doing, but AD as the team's best player should have more than enough leeway to demand the ball. AD is also not consistent enough against the Nuggets, and I want him to take any talk about that personally. I really hope the Lakers prove me wrong, and it sure would be nice to see them raise banner number 18. A real banner, by the way, not that cringeworthy in-season tournament banner, but I just honestly think that this team had it easier last year than they do this year. Even though things have gotten much better since I made a full length video on the Lakers, I'm just not convinced that this team can do what they did last year again in such a deep Western Conference. Going from the 13th seed to the Conference Finals last year really was a joyride, but I look back on it thinking it was fool's gold. Most of all, the Lakers just didn't have anything they can do in the first place to upgrade their roster enough to put together a better team than the Denver Nuggets. That's hard to do anyways when they have the best player in the world who makes everyone around him better. One thing I still stand by that I said last time I made a full length video on the Lakers is their championship window closed as soon as they made the trade for Russell Westbrook. It was impressive that they were able to get away from his contract but that trade was already their death sentence for any championship hopes. What do you guys think? Do you think the Lakers will have another run like they did last year or not? I'd love to read your comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see it reach more people, an easy way to help make that happen is to like this video. If you could please consider subscribing,
bling and turning on notifications welcome to the team or if you're already subscribed thanks so much for your support as always links to my social media are down below if you want to see my more immediate reactions to things going on in the sports world if you'd like to see my most recent video and the one that youtube recommends both are up above thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time go lakers